been a fan of Lupin the Third since 2021. I came pretty late to the show, and from what I've seen so far, the fandom is pretty accepting of newcomers. And I was scrolling through the internet looking for some interesting Lupin stuff to watch, and I found this. Castle of Cagliostro on Netflix. So I gave it a watch, like, sure, why not? And then, yeah, this is the best film I've ever seen. That's it, you don't really need to watch this video. I mean, do, but, like, it's a 10 out of 10. So, just let me explain why this is the best film in the Lupin the Third franchise. Spoilers for a 44-year-old movie, by the way. So Kaylee Ocho starts with a WHOA! Who's that guy? Daisuke Jigen, huh? Well, he's pretty cool, and I'm sure there's no one thirsting over him. And this weird jacket man with a goofy looking hand, known as Lupin, Lupon, Rupon, or Cli Cliff? Where the hell did you get Cliff from? Anyway, they're stealing shit from this massive casino because these two are robbers. You can get pretty much everything you need to know about these characters in the first scene. It's a movie about a super cool looking guy, and Lupin, who steal shit and dismantle cars apparently. There's some more characters to introduce, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So Lupin and Jigen have stolen a ton of money, and while they're celebrating their victory, they realize their money is counterfeit. So they decide to dump the money and go in search of the people who made this money. And then we'll move in and take over! And it is then followed by one of the best opening scenes I've ever seen. The duo make their way to Cagliostro, the place that Lupin says the money comes from. Their tire bursts in the middle of the road, so they pull over to fix it, and just then, two cars drive by chasing each other. A girl wearing a wedding dress and three men in bowler hats. The following chase ensues, and Jigen manages to shoot the tire off the Blues Brothers' car, and then they crash. Lupin goes to speak to the girl in the car, but she's passed out, so he takes the wheel of the girl's car and tries to drive them to safety, but fails miserably and crashes. The girl and Lupin fall off a cliff, but Lupin manages to use a grappling hook to save them which is in his belt for some reason. The girl wakes up and sees their situation and is understandably a bit shocked, so Lupin tries to... Lupin? So Lupin tries to reel the grappling hook down and fails when the branch snaps and they fall to their doom. They land at the bottom and the branch crashes down on Lupin's head, and so he dies. The rest of the movie continues from the perspective of Inspector Zenigata as he grieves over the death of... Oh, wait, no, he's fine. And then the bowler hat boys arrive to take her away. Jigen comes to wake up Lupin, and Lupin finds that she's left her ring with him, but it looks... Uh, familiar. The pair head to an abandoned castle that bears the emblem of the ring. The groundskeeper tells him to piss off, and then tells him that the prince died when the castle burned down. Lupin has a nice walk down to the lake. He looks over the ring and remarks that she's all grown up now. Jigen comes over and just looms over Lupin a bit before... Jesus Christ, let him live! So Lupin goes and explains that when he was younger, he broke into this castle, which has the bowler hat's boat sitting in the dock. Lupin points out a gyrocopter. Hey, yeah, it's me. A gyrocopter is basically like the go-kart of helicopters. They fly in the air like a helicopter, but also require less power and are only for one person. Anyway, back to the review. The gyrocopter lands and the Count of Cagliostro steps out and Jesus Christ he's terrifying, please stay away from me. His goblin butler steps out and starts undressing him, trust me it's not as bad as it sounds, and explaining the situation to him. The Count goes to a secret room where the princess is sleeping. The Count has a golden version of the ring and goes to look at hers, only to see that she doesn't have it and so he tries to squish her hair between his fingers like Mabel in Gravity Falls. Lupin and Jigen are at a bar eating some damn good looking spaghetti and analyzing the ring. They find out that the Count intends to marry the princess and is also a womanizer, while some haverhead looking jackass tries to spy on them. Back at the motel, the Count's crab men break in and try to attack Lupin and Jigen. Lupin flashbangs them and they barely get away. This reaffirms that Lupin and Jigen are on the right track to ruin the Count's plans. The movie cuts to some woman spying on the Count. I'm sure this woman isn't going to be important later. The goblin butler goes to the Count and tells him that Lupin and Jigen kicked the shit out of their crab henchmen. The Count notices that Jeeves has a note on his back from Lupin saying that he is going to interrupt the Count's plans. The next day, this cool samurai guy shows up outside the castle and goes to Lupin's hideout. This guy is Goemon! Goemon is a samurai with a sword that can cut through quite literally anything. It's terrifying. So he goes and joins Lupin and Jigen as the police arrive and the inspector steps out of the car. Now that he's here, we can start the show. Inspector Zenigata is an inspector, yeah, no shit, for Interpol, and his wife's mission is to catch and jail Lupin. At night, Lupin and Jigen sneak through an aqueduct to get inside the castle. But the castle's defense system split the two up, I don't know why someone would have a defense system inside an aqueduct, 
and then the aqueduct drags Lupin up into a windmill, and then he goes down to a water fountain. At the same time, Inspector Zenigata notices that the windmill leads to the water fountain, so he rushes over to the water fountain to make sure that Lupin isn't there. And Lupin has to hide while Zenigata searches around for him. One of Zenigata's officers goes over to Zenigata and tells him that the Count has asked him to leave. Outraged by this, Zenigata runs over to yell at them or something, and this provides Lupin an opening to jump out of the fountain and get into his Zenigata outfit, which I guess he just has on him. The real Zenigata goes and yells at the head guard who asked him to leave, and once Zenigata is gone, Lupin in disguise runs up and tells him that Zenigata was actually Lupin in disguise, so the guards chase after him. I know that might sound confusing, but bear with me. Which causes Interpol guards to attack the Count's guards, and in all the confusion, Lupin gets away, but Zenigata notices and chases Lupin into the castle's main room. And as it turns out, Lupin triggers a trap door that opens and Zenigata falls down, and Lupin narrowly escapes. In the armory, a woman spying on the Count from earlier is stealing some documents from the safe in the wall. Good to see you, Fujiko. Wolf. Hmm. Lupin asks Fujiko where the princess is, and she says that the princess is at the top of the castle, and before she even finishes her damn sentence, Lupin is practically running up the wall together. So, he jumps into Clarice's tower. And the other princess's name is Clarice. Yeah, the movie doesn't mention this until halfway through, so it's not my fault. Anyways, Lupin sneaks into Clarice's tower and then starts talking all fairy tale shit and how he's gonna save her, and then when she doesn't believe him. Um. Presto! Well, I thought that was going in a completely different direction. And then the lights turn on and the crabmen emerge from the walls and do some sort of interpretive dancing. And then the count walks in. Oh, you come on, one square arm, no, you won't. Come on, then, a bloody bash ya. <laughs> the Count flushes Lupin down the toilet that leads into the dungeon. The Count starts trying to take Clarice's ring off her until he realizes that the ring is talking to them. Turns out Lupin anticipated this and made a fake ring that blew up in the Count's face. Literally. I don't know, I don't really think the flushing joke really works because there isn't any water. <laughs> Lupin decides he's gonna start exploring the dungeon and find a ton of dead bodies dating back to the friggin' dinosaurs or a ma my math teacher's birthday. And then from around the corner comes our old pal, Inspector Zenigata. The next morning, the Count sends the thing from the Black Lagoon to go and kill Lupin in case he survived. The two guards find Lupin and Zenigata, but they're actually just their clothes on skeletons and the two beat the shit out of the guards. Lupin and Zenigata follow the guards' tracks back to the exit of the dungeon and run to the closest exit they can find, which just happens to be the Count's counterfeiting factory. How convenient. Seeing as all this is insanely illegal, the pair form an alliance to take down the Count for the sake of the law, and also because he's an asshole. Clarice is sitting in her tower when Fujiko walks in and tells her that she's gonna break the princess out of the tower, but while this is happening, a fire breaks out from the factory and distracts the guards long enough for Lupin and Zenigata to get to the gyrocopter and fly to the princess's tower to save her. And while Lupin is on the top of the tower, Jeeves, the goblin butler, shoots Lupin in the chest and knocks him down. The Count tells Clarice that if Lupin doesn't give him the ring, he'll shoot him and kill him. Clarice agrees and takes the ring from Lupin's jacket and gives it to the Count. But it turns out he's a lying scumbag and tries to shoot Lupin anyway. But Zenigata flies down and picks up Lupin in the gyrocopter. They fly away as the gyrocopter explodes and Lupin gets picked up by Jigen and driven away. Sometime later in a courtroom, Zenigata is trying to prove that the Count is breaking the law, but all the people in the room and Hitler are corrupt and being paid off by the Count. Or at least it's implied. They decide not to do anything about the Count and take Zenigata off the case. Back at the castle, Lupin is rusting in the groundskeeper's cabin with Jigen and Goemon. Lupin wakes up and finds out that he's been asleep for three days, mood, and starts trying to get up and save the princess but the dumbass and forgot that he was in critical condition. So instead of doing anything, he explains that when he was a younger lad, back in part one, he broke into the Count's castle and almost died but the princess saved him when he was nine. Inspector Zenigata gets a telegram from Fujiko reminding him that even though he can't protect the Count, he still has orders to catch Lupin. Fujiko is here as a news reporter, and so is Interpol. At night, the Count is taking the princess, who has been drugged, to get married. With a special appearance from the clan. I stole that joke from, uh, what's the name? I've forgotten the name of the, ah, oh, shit. I forgot, I'll just, I'll just link it in the description. It's probably on screen right now. I've forgotten the name, it's a really good video. By your own free will, do you, Clarice, agree to this marriage? If you choose to remain silent, we shall assume that your answer is yes. Well, that's the most insult thing I've ever heard. All of a sudden, Lupin's voice starts to say that the marriage is bullshit. Jigen and Gaimon appear with carrying Lupin on a log, 
and then he starts to out the Count as a jackass. The Count goes and stabs the shit out of Lupin, which wakes up Clarice from her trance. Then Lupin explodes because it's actually a robot, and the Bishop grabs the rings and reveals that he was actually Lupin, and sets off a ton of fireworks to cause a commotion. A fight breaks out as Interpol breaks in, and Lupin breaks out into the tower. Zenigata goes to signal Fujiko, who has been broadcasting the whole thing onto the news, to follow him. Zenigata goes down to the counterfeit factory and shows the factory to everyone that the Count is a lying bastard. Lupin and Clarice run down to the clock tower and they climb up to the tower, but the Count and his men follow them. While in the clock tower, they climb up the gears and the Count's men try to shoot them. The men try to chase them but get crushed by the gears because they're morons. So the Count decides to take on Lupin himself and kicks him into one of the gears. With Lupin preoccupied, he goes to take the rings from the princess. Princess escapes to the clock face, but the Count follows. He tries to get the rings off her, but Lupin comes out and says that he has the rings and that he will give them to the Count if he lets Clarice go. Which he doesn't, and instead shoots his fingers at him instead, and tries to steal the rings while Lupin is hanging onto the tower for dear life. The Count grabs the rings and goes to put them in the goat's eyes. Yeah, hi, it's me again. I just realized I didn't explain this. It's like a riddle that says some goofy shit that means, like, you put the rings in the goat's eyes. Oh, there's like a goat statue on the top of the tower. I kind of forgot about it. My bad. And when he does, the clock tower's hands move up to 12 and crush him. The clock tower breaks the dam. Also, there's a dam. The movie doesn't really show it up until this point, but shut up, it's not my fault. And then all of the water floods the castle. Lupin and Clarice piss off to some place and the castle reveals an ancient Roman city hidden under the lake, which mildly disappoints Lupin because he can't really carry away an entire city, so this was all for nothing but at least he saved Clarice. Speaking of, Clarice tells Lupin that she loves him and wants to stay with him forever. And Lupin rejects her in the nicest way possible and hops into his fear and drives away into the sunset and the movie ends. Oh, that was a lot of talking. Now I actually get to review the movie. Yeah, that wasn't even it. I have to actually say what I liked about the movie now. Now. Of all the Lupin the Third movies, this is probably the most kid-friendly and tame. Hell, most tame piece of Lupin media at all. If you compare this to the woman called Fujiko Mine, then it's pretty much a Ghibli movie. Which brings me to the fact that it kind of is. Why is this, you probably aren't asking? Because this movie was written and directed by the animation goat himself, Hayao Miyazaki. Yeah, that's right, this was his first film. Back before he started up Ghibli, him and his buddy Isao Takahata, god I hope I pronounced that right, used to work at Toei Animation which animated the Lupin Part 1 anime. Part 1 wasn't received too well because of its mature themes and rape and violence and other fucked up stuff like that, so they brought these two in to tone it down in order to improve ratings. Unfortunately, the tame nature of this movie does not sit well with some people in the Lupin fandom because Lupin is supposed to be serious and Lupin would never be nice to a whammon because he's an insane rapist. I don't understand how these people can want Lupin to be like that. You do you and I'll do me. I guess the reason I like this more is because I'm... Uh, it reminds me of Castle in the Sky and Nausicaa and, you know, Miyazaki's earlier films that all had this fantastic atmosphere. For every action-packed scene, there's a calm scene to process all that action before getting back to more of it. Like after the car chase scene, Lupin goes to the forest and sits by the lake. Then after escaping the castle and he gets shot, there's a scene with him in the groundskeeper's cabin where he just explains a nice story, you know? Which is a style that Miyazaki carries in almost all of his work. It happens in Castle in the Sky, where Shida and Patsu get chased by pirates and then chill in a cave for a bit. How's Moving Castle? Jeez, Miyazaki makes a lot of movies about castles. After Sobi is transformed into my 8th grade English teacher, she has a snack on a mountain. But there's another person who really makes this movie work. And that's Yuji Ono. I love the music in this movie. I even listened to it while making this video. As pretty much always, this is all thanks to Yuji Ono. Fucking legend has been doing this for... Where's my calculator? 45 years. This was his second movie for the Lupin franchise, and he smashed it out of the park with Samba Temperado, Fire Treasure, and of course, Playback 80. Holy shit, I love Playback 80. It's fantastic. It's playing in the background right now. It's amazing. The jazzy soundtrack fits every scene in this movie, and it's just mwah, perfect. I wish I could talk about this in length, but I don't. I don't really understand music, and I'd probably just look stupid. So. No, no, yeah, this one should be short. 
There's no real problems with this movie, but I think it's the dub that I watch that changes a few key things. The whole fairy tale speech is changed to some speech that's like poetic but less. It's not really fairy tale. I don't know. There's also swearing added because ah, oh, Lupin is edgy and you have to make him edgy, and that's that's really it. That's all I dislike about the film, except for like. There's a coincidence where they just walk into the counterfeit money room and for some reason that I only really found that bothering as I was reading this script. I am really mad though. Oh, and um, Solid Snake voices Lupin in the other dub. <laughs> Castle Cagliostro is a fantastic film. It started careers, inspired many, and it's just, it's just a good film. I don't know why I'm being so formal about this. This is a YouTube video. So, um... That's so all yeah. for me.